Hello, welcome to this PPR Econ video on conflicting macroeconomic performance objectives. So let's get straight into it. Uh, see if you can recall the six uh, pairs of objectives that conflict within an economy. Okay, so pause the video, see if you can remember them. Okay, so hopefully you've got uh, full employment conflicting with low and stable inflation, economic growth conflicting with inflation as well. Economic growth conflicting with inequality, economic growth conflicting with environmental concern, economic growth conflicting with the balance of payments stability, or a balance, balance payments, and a balanced budget and economic growth. So first thing I would like is for you to explain some AO3 in regards to why um, full employment and low inflation conflict. Pause the video, answer that please. So hopefully you've basically got the fact that um, that there is a trade-off between the two so that whenever unemployment is very low, i.e. more people are in work, this tends to cause demand pull inflation um, and vice versa. But also as um, unemployment decreases, workers have more bargaining power to drive up wages. So with that, there's more wage growth and therefore there's more inflation and you can flip that in its head as well to have a think about the fact that whenever people, a lot of people are out of work i.e. unemployment is very high people can't ask for higher wages because unfortunately if they ask for higher wages uh, they'll just get replaced by other workers because there's an abundance or a pool of available workers there so um, see if you can pause the video and have a go at drawing a diagram that might represent this so hopefully you've got the short on Phillips curve. Um, so there it is. That shows the relationship between the two. Uh, have a go at some AO4 point, uh, points for these conflicting maples, please. Okay, so hopefully you've drawn and had to think about the long run Phillips curve. So that's on the screen there. You can take a read at it. Hopefully you understand that in the long run, basically any policies to reduce unemployment Demand side policies to reduce unemployment will only ever feed in to higher inflation and return back, uh, I suppose, uh, through classical theory to the NIRU or the natural rate of unemployment. So, um, yeah. Economic growth and inflation. Have a go at explaining how they conflict, please. So, hopefully, you've got uh, the whole idea of uh, demand side growth. So um, if AD increases, uh, as you can see here in a classical diagram, that should obviously cause um, inflation. So have a think about uh, AO4 for this please, pause the video. And hopefully you've got the idea that Keynesian theory would suggest that if there's a lot of slack within the economy, first off, uh, that that might lead to um, economic growth doesn't necessarily mean there will be inflation if you're on the elastic part. And also if it's just uh, economic growth brought about by supply side policies, improvements in productivity, whatever it might be, that will not necessarily be inflationary either. So um, have a think about that. Uh, next one, economic growth and inequality. AO3, please. So there's a few reasons that you can read there. Uh, modern economies are creating an increased number of part-time or flexible service jobs. Obviously, the owners of these businesses are going to get more money uh, as the, the economy develops. People will be in low pay or national minimum wage, which drives uh, inequality. Asset prices rise when the economy does well. Share prices, house prices, if you own one of them, it's good for you. There's a bit of a wealth effect, but uh, quite a lot of people don't. And obviously, they end up actually paying rent, for example, and uh, that's like that, that's a leakage almost when you think about the fact that prices are going up as I suppose a bit of an injection, not that that's theoretically true, but that's some way you can think about it that causes inequality to worsen. And the benefit systems are um, index based and actually uh, it's something to look up. The triple lock scheme actually has been suspended at the minute here in 2022. So um, that's something they go away and look up as well. Um, obviously a diagram you could draw is the Cosnitz curve. So see if you could draw that now. So Cousin's curve looks like that. So you can see it's income per capita. The economy grows. Inequality worsens. But then after a while, this might be a couple of AO4 points. It gets better again. So see if you can think about what some of them AO4 ideas are. Uh, hopefully you've got basically that as the economy develops and incomes per capita rise, 
the economy moves into more um, service-based jobs and there's better access to education and healthcare, people's incomes rise, they get more access to them merit goods, and in the long run, people have more skills, qualifications, and can, can get, everyone, I should say, can get better jo jobs. So that should reduce inequality. Uh, economic growth and environmental concerns, see if you can think of a reason why they might conflict. Uh, quite simply, pollution, consumption of non-renewable resources, uh, being a consumption-based uh, economy is going to lead to environmental issues. Um, the externalities associated with higher rates of growth. AO4 ideas, please. Pause the video. So uh, the environmental Cosnitz curve, which is the exact same as the, the Cosnitz curve for the conflicting maples above, it's got the same uh, idea. Apart from inequality, it's to do with environmental degradation. Um, and that actually um, is the same thing. So as the economy grows, you focus more on services, where obviously there's less production and manufacturing. And pollution, you might develop new technologies. So the assumption is that as economies grow, actually environmental concerns aren't as big a, an issue, you could say. Uh, economic growth and balance payments. Pause the video, see if you can think of any AO4 for that. Uh, hopefully you've got that as the economy develops. Uh, there might be no more demand for the products. That leads to spicy in their currency. Um, and as you know, as exports become more expensive, uh, and we import more through the currency appreciation that can cause a trade deficit. So economic growth can cause balance of payments and stability via that. And also, as the economy grows, we assume incomes rise as more people get into work and, um, and employment increases. Um, the UK has got what's called a marginal propensity to import, which means that we, we spend a, a higher proportion of our additional income on imports which obviously therefore is going to lead to an increase in import levels and a balanced payments deficit. Pause, see if you think of NAA4. Uh, hopefully you've got things maybe like the Marshall Learner Condition or a simple alternative might be that it also depends upon the performance of other countries if they're experiencing the same situation. Uh, these sort of instabilities might not actually ever materialise. Um, so the assumption on the previous uh, points would have been citrus parvus. AO4, it depends what's happening in them countries, it depends upon their growth, recession, currencies as well. Uh, final one, uh, why am I trying to balance the budget? So uh, reduce the deficit, basically conflict with economic growth. Hopefully you've got that this is basically an austerity measure. You're making um, cuts to the deficit in order to hopefully balance the books and therefore in the future maybe uh, have a budget surplus and repay some debt. Because obviously the more deficits you run, the higher uh, the debt is accumulated. So hopefully tightening fiscal policy, i.e. cutting government spending and maybe increasing taxes, is obviously going to have a um, negative impact upon AD. It will shift inwards and therefore obviously lead to lower growth. Cuts to education and health as well. Will have a detrimental impact upon the productive potential of the economy, so the LRAS. Finally, any AO4 points for uh, that final point? Uh, hopefully you've got uh, that at the time uh, austerity was introduced, uh, this idea of expansionary fiscal contraction was put forward, so that was major cuts, um, uh, changes to future expectations about taxes and government spending, so that might expand private consumption, consumption. it might have a, an expansionary impact upon the economy, and it may rid the structural deficit. So it might have been caused by overspending. So in fact, these cuts actually might uh, incentivize more uh, or more efficient use of the money that the private se uh, sorry, the public sector have and have a positive impact upon growth in that way. So um, you can look them up. You could also maybe look in Croydon, uh, Croydon, um, Croydon Night Theory, uh, or Croydon in, I suppose it would be, uh, there as well. So uh, look some of them points up, um, and if you, didn't get all them questions quite correct, remember to repeat the video. Thank you very much.